In this example, we are looking to solve the system of equations. We're asked to do it two different ways. We're asked to do it using substitution. We're asked to use uh, elimination. So um, first off, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't even touch substitution because the idea of substitution is you need to get one of these letters by itself. And it doesn't matter which one. You're trying to get the easiest one by itself. Well, to get this x by itself, you're going to have to divide by 4. 4 doesn't go into those very nicely, so you're going to create fractions. Uh, if I were to try to get that y by itself, you're going to divide by 3. 3 doesn't go into those very nicely. You're going to create fractions. Dividing by 5 creates fractions. Not there, but there. And then if you divide by 2, 2 doesn't go into those. So, to be honest, I'm not even going to bother to do it this method. So, here's my justification. So, to me, you cannot get one variable by itself without creating a fraction. Without creating a fraction. So, why use that method? Because we have another method. That other method may avoid fractions. So, personally, I would not use substitution. So, I'm not going to show a method that I wouldn't do on this particular problem. No, I can't spell. Substitution. Okay, so that leaves us with elimination. So, elimination. Let me rewrite our problem so we can see it. We got a 4x plus 3y equaling 11, and we have a negative 5x plus 2y equaling 15. So, elimination. We're looking to combine our x's, combine our y's, combine our constants, and our goal is to cancel out either your x's or the y's. Does not matter, 100% up to you. Uh, but you're going to manipulate both these equations to make the x's go away or make the y's go away. So if you're going to choose the x's, which is not bad because we have a positive and a negative, there's, we don't have to worry about the sign in order to cancel them, but we'd have to make them 20. Or if you did the y's, you can make them both become 6. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to do the y's just to keep things potentially a little bit smaller. So I need to make them cancel so I can make them 6's. However, I need to make one of them a negative 6 and one of them a positive 6. So when I do that, and as long as you change, if you change one thing, you gotta change them all the same. All right, so we're gonna distribute a negative two to everything and a three to everything. So we're gonna double everything, change all their signs, and we're gonna triple everything. So as long as you do it to everything, where everything is consistent, so that's good. So negative eight x minus six y equals negative 22, and then negative 15 x plus six y equals 45. So the y's go away. We combine our like terms. So negative 23x is going to equal a positive 23 divided by negative 23. So x is going to equal negative 1. Great. So then uh, I'll pick one of the original equations because these are um, I just made them bigger, so why, why use those? Maybe the top one, because everything's positive there. So I'm going to sub in my negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 plus 3y equals 11. So that's negative 4 plus 3y equals 11. Add 4. 3y equals 15. Divide by 3. y equals 5. So, my solution is negative 1, 5. So, without graphing, I know that my lines would intersect. So, I don't need to graph it to know basically what would happen with these two lines, and that's exactly where they would intersect. So, the last part of this is classifying. So, since we have a solution, that makes our graph consistent. Consistent means you have a solution. But again, there's two different kinds of having a solution. You have either infinite solutions or a solution. So consistent, because it has at least one solution. And then our last problem is we only do have one solution. So that is independent.
And the reason is the equations, in order for it to be infinite solutions, the equations are not multiples of each other. So in order for infinite solutions to happen, they actually have to be perfect multiples of each other, and we definitely don't have that. Otherwise, we'd have a whole different situation when we try to cancel everything away. So that was uh, a problem that was suggested to use both methods, but at the end of the day, I gotta pick a method that's gonna be the most efficient, and I definitely want to avoid fractions because we didn't have fractions throughout the whole thing here. So elimination is a good method on that particular problem. And then we'll do a couple more and maybe substitution is going to be a better one on some others.